to all of you. Um, so I am uh, with Siemens. Uh, it's a 175-year-old uh, tech company. I'm in charge of cybersecurity and trust there. Um, and uh, to the topic of today, um, um, sort of Siemens operates in, in verticals that really addresses roughly 63% of uh, the greenhouse gas uh, emissions that account for 63%. For uh, so it's a, it's a large amount. So it's, it's buildings, it's transportation, uh, it's industrial production. And so it's uh, for us really an imperative to uh, look into uh, ways of decarbonization. Um, and uh, that's, as you probably know, if you're a little bit familiar with the topic, typically in, in uh, four different areas. Uh, you, you can look at your direct emissions, indirect emissions, energy consumption, for instance. Uh, you can look into the supply chain as it comes from uh, upstream. That's actually the biggest challenge that links to uh, the technology of, of blockchain and decentralization. Uh, and then the upstream part, part as well in the supply chain. And finally, also uh, carbon capturing and the possibilities to, to offset uh, for emissions. Um, and here we really see the big problem around um, actionable data uh, on a product level, as well as trustworthiness. Uh, and here the, the, the term trust already uh, links probably to like technology that, that connects us here. Um, uh, actionable means really uh, we cannot continue with average data. So typically <clears throat> today very often the databases are used, LCA databases, lifecycle assessment databases with average values. Uh, so we need data that really comes directly from the suppliers and not just the direct ones, but the, uh, the multi, multiple, through multiple tiers in the, in the supply chain. Um, and trustworthiness uh, is sort of what you need at the very end, that you, you see a label maybe on a product or a component and you really want to trust this value. Um, and here, uh, I think it's, it would be naive to think, oh, let's put product carbon footprints into uh, a decentralized ledger, a distributed ledger, um, cook it up with a little bit of zero knowledge crypto and bomb, we have the, the uh, trusted PCF value at the end. Um, so this would not work, first of all, because uh, you would not get all the suppliers potentially on such a system. Uh, you might not even get a single one because they are very um, reluctant to give out their sort of sacred data, the, the bill of materials, the bill of processes. Um, um, and secondly, uh, you need a source of trust, really. You, you need, the trust has to come from somewhere. Uh, and here uh, we really think that um, we need more technology around verifiable credentials, which are more like a peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Uh, we need like uh, serenity in, in, in data provisioning, uh, and that's where we really push quite a bit. And maybe a bit later, there would be more chance we'll to talk about this. Dig into that, Doug. Thank you. So um, uh, a happy overlap in a way. Um, my name is Doug Johnson Pernskin. Um, I'm founder and chief exec of Circular. We're a five-year-old uh, business. Um, and we use Hyperledger Fabric as part of our platform. And what we do is traceability in complex industrial supply chains, a theme that was just talked about by Alex. We are helping, okay. for example, sorry, forgive me. Um, we are helping car manufacturers, for example, who are building EVs to understand the inherited emissions from the supply chain. Most of us as consumers don't necessarily realize that although electric vehicles are supposed to be better for the planet, the vast majority of the emissions from the life of an electric vehicle come from its first manufacturer turning rock into battery grade materials in order to put a battery into an EV is massively energy intensive. And so understanding the contribution of the upstream participants to that carbon footprint is a real challenge. It's a challenge of trust, it's a challenge of data um, and extracting that data. And, and the same information can also be used to capture other ESG metrics, whether it's water use or human rights abuses. Some of the raw materials in our electric vehicles, for example, come with concerns of child labor like cobalt. Um, we've been at this for five years. Uh, we now work with a whole host of car manufacturers around, all, uh, around the world, just been picked by the German government as, as the technology lead for a project to create a battery passport for Germany to meet the requirements of EU's battery regulations, um, and branching out into other industries as well, other industrial materials that come with similar concerns around sustainability. So very much looking forward to this debate. Alex? Uh, yeah, so thank you for having me very much on the, on the panel. I'm Alex Elton, the uh, Chief Operating Officer of Seal Storage Technology. We're a decentralized storage provider built on top of the Filecoin ecosystem. We have a particular focus of commercializing the network, and we're targeting a lot of the different Web2 um, institutions and bringing them over to Web3. 
we've had a lot of success talking to research institutions, academic institutions, as well as scientific institutions, and uh, creating different software platforms for them to be able to properly import their data into the blockchain and actually feel some of those benefits that the blockchain has to offer. When you think immutability, uh, chain of custody of data, as well as uh, diversifying risk with uh, eliminating a single point of failure risk. Um, from an, an environmental impact perspective, we had to analyze what our biggest footprint was going to be. And it became obvious that it comes from the electricity that we use in a data center. Um, so we've got renewable energy data centers, but we've also taken it one step further and actually extracting the data or the uh, electricity usage directly from the uh, output uh, outlets within the data center so that we get a real time measurement of the actual uh, electrical output on top of our systems. We take that data and we measure it against the emissions from the various geographic locations of the data centers. So we could try to put together the most accurate picture of what our emissions really are. But most importantly, it creates this open source and trustless system that people can come in and audit our data and, and to a certain extent actually creates a, an open source auditable process that we can iterate on what other people are looking at. And we're, our hopes is to take what we're developing here and make it an easy uh, changeover for other people in our industry and, and create a standard. Mm -hmm.